Hello everybody and welcome back to another Physics Let's Talk. I haven't done one of these for a while so I thought I'd give it a go. If you enjoyed the video today please do leave it one of those lovely likes and subscribe if you want to help this bitch. Now I've just cut my hair so I'm sorry if they're a little tufty bits. I hope they're not distracting. Uh, aside from that let's roll that intro. Today I'm going to be talking about three different topics. First being a bunch of YouTubers that are completely scamming their fans and I think that's a disgusting thing to do. That's what I've always thought and that's what I like making a point about on this channel. When YouTubers think that they can really manipulate people, it disgusts me. It really does not it happens far too often. This is basically about an event called Hello World where a lot of YouTubers get together and do a, a live event kind of thing, but they screwed it up completely, uh, and all it was was a cash grab, and that's a bunch of piss, if you ask me. Second is a little film analysis about a film I watched recently called Synecdoche, New York. This is by Charlie Kaufman, who wrote Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is my second favourite film of all time. He's also done Being John Malkovich, an adaptation. Synecdoche, New York is the best film I've ever seen, without a doubt. Never have I seen such attention to detail, such attention to subtle nuance. It blew my mind, and I think it's one of those films that you need to watch several times to really get it. Finally, I'm going to be talking about some albums I enjoy listening to. So let's let's use this as a platform yet again. Uh, the whole idea of my Let's Talk videos is hopefully I can get a sort of a communication going between me and you guys. So. If you want, I'm going to be suggesting these albums. If you want to check them out, that would be great. What I'd really like, though, is if you guys could suggest some albums to me. And then the ones I enjoy, I will feature in my next Let's Talk video. So we can start a kind of cycle of suggestions. So they're the topics for today. Without further ado, let's dive into our first topic. Our first topic of the day is about Hello World. Now, this is a complete cash grab. It's nothing but a money-making event. They didn't want to do it so they could get closer to their fans. It is purely for money only, and that's why I am so disappointed in these YouTubers. The event was all over the place and it was hideously overpriced. Tickets were a little bit too expensive, kind of like a hundred pounds too expensive? Yeah, ridiculous. <laughs> I couldn't believe it when I heard this. That is way, way too much money for what the event was. Let's have a look at their Facebook page and I'll give you a little bit of info on what the event's all about. Here is the event info on their Facebook page. Enter Hello World and take a stroll down Main Street. Listen to live music, learn a fresh new dance routine, watch an epic comedy show and meet your neighbours. Just make sure you get to the giant emoji house uh, as the sun sets, night falls and our world enters its second act. With the emoji house pulsating the world's biggest social media stars including Zoella who is on the stage for five minutes we'll get into that later pointless blog Joe Sugg Casper Lee Rose and Rosie Jim Chapman Louise Pentland KSI Marcus Butler you say the world's biggest social media stars, but I haven't heard of a few of these people. They're probably quite big. I'm not really up to date on that kind of thing. And more will be ready to share a mind-blowing live experience where the unreal is made real. Hello World is an epic four-hour immersive live show like nothing on earth. Two identical performances on the 28th and 29th of October at the Birmingham Gensing Arena bring the world's biggest social talent and you together under one roof for an unforgettable shared experience. Yes, I don't think people will be forgetting this one, but for all the wrong reasons. This isn't their world, this is your world. This is Hello World. <laughs> so overdramatic for what is literally a pile of shit. So Hello World, very disappointing. 
Let's have a look now at Jim Chapman, who is uh, kind of promoting it and trying to make it sound a lot better than it was. At Hallowell, there are kind of two parts. There's a daytime experience and a nighttime show. For the daytime experience, picture this. You've got a big street, like an indoor street, but it's kind of outdoory vibes. So you've got an indoor street called Main Street. Along Main Street, you may bump into a YouTuber or two. There's also things happening. You've got carnival rides. You've got um, exciting... Um, I don't know if I can tell you about the other exciting things. There's lots of exciting things happening. Something which I'm really happy about, which I don't know I can tell you yet because it hasn't actually officially been told, so I won't. But there's live music and there's all sorts of cool stuff. There's also classes. So if you want to do, say, a class of becoming a YouTuber and learn how to do things, maybe you'll bump into me there. No, you won't. Not at all. So he's kind of trying to make it out like you're going to bump into YouTubers. Well, I mean, that's literally what he said. Which isn't going to happen. And it didn't. No, 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 no. We are plebs, remember? These guys are on a pedestal, really, really high up. They do not give a shit about us. They do not give a crap about their fans or they wouldn't have done this whole event. I think it's awful because these people have, pe people look up to these guys. They are idols. They shouldn't mistreat their fans on such a great level. It's awful. Now, let us get into some details about what really happened and why it was so horrible. To do this, we are going to have a look at some of the Facebook reviews. So, let us have a look-see. They got 2.3 out of 5 stars with 167 reviews. Most of them were 1 star reviews. That's 99 out of 167 one star reviews 13 2 star 6 3 star 11 4 star and 38 5 star okay first review here if i could give this event no stars i would i feel ripped off annoyed and cheated what was supposed to be a great day out for our da daughter turned into chaos twice she almost pushed twice she was almost pushed over and trampled on by the hordes of screaming girls running from one end of the floor to the other it was poorly organized and frankly boring there should have been one stage to stop the running around time slot so you could actually go around the event and see what was actually happening we didn't expect to meet and greet with any of the youtubers but we expected to see what was going on we arrived at 1 p.m and left an hour and a half later so pretty awful pretty damn awful Second review, absolute con, unsafe and no crowd control, this is an event for kids, no sign of any staff to deal with this. Two, not as advertised, knew this was not going to be a meet and greet event, but understood at point of ticket purchase there would be signings, get there, for competition win winners only. Why was this not communicated at point of purchase? That's awful, that's really bad, so no no one met up with any of these YouTubers because you literally weren't allowed to. F me. Three, stands closed early. Why close them at 2.15? And uh, I've heard a lot of people say that no one said anything. No one explained these things. Number four, spent a lot of money on tickets. What did I get in return? Nothing. Ha! Five, no VIP goodie bag. <laughs> what is the point of spending money when you don't get what was advertised? Great. Well done, guys. I and many others paid for VIP and didn't receive a goodie bag either. Also, definitely didn't bring us closer to the stars than anyone else. I think myself and a few others uh, have decided to get standard trading involved because when we purchased tickets, their contract promised us a goodie bag. Yeah, yeah, go on. F***ing go to trading standards. I think that's a very good idea. Third review. To the people who are compl- Oh, no, sorry. Third review, four hour train journey costing £80, hotel costing £120, two hours queuing, two hours queuing! Wasn't so bothered about that as expected security checks and welcomes then. However, a quick wand over and not even asked to open my bag or have a wand over, it is just irresponsible. It is. Do you remember the Ariana Grande concert? Yeah. We need to be a bit more careful in England so we don't get blown the f up. Shit. And all to go to a show that ended half an hour early, no reason given. And Zoella to spend f 
five minutes on stage. Great, great. Just shows it was just a big money-making exercise for the organisers, of which I believe Zoella herself was, and before anyone bangs on about anxiety, if you don't like going to a theatre, as she states, why on earth would you put yourself in a position where you were attracting thousands of fans into a big building to see you? Oh yes, I think I know. It's all about the money! Silly me to fall for all the hype. Indeed, silly you. So, what a load of... What a load of shit. What a load of shit. So, I think by this point it's incredibly apparent as to why this event was an absolute joke. So, let's move on now to our second topic of the day. Right. This film is going to be a little bit hard to give you an analysis of because of how how much depth there is to this film, how many layers there are to this film. It is an absolute masterpiece. So, Charlie Kaufman is the writer and director of Synecdoche, New York. He also was the writer of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, as well as Adaptation and Being John Malkovich. I still haven't seen Adaptation, but Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is my second favourite film of all time, uh, and Being John Malkovich is an absolutely fantastic film if you're into very, very, very surreal stuff, which I am. So, Synecdoche New York focuses on several different themes that reoccur throughout the whole film. So I'll give you a quick synopsis online. Life is looking pretty bleak for theatre director Caden Cotard, played by Philip Seymour Hoffman. An incredible performance. His wife and daughter have left him. His therapist is more imp- interested in plugging her new book than helping him with his problems, and a strange disease is causing his body to shut down. Caden leaves his home in Synecdoche, New York, and heads to New York City, where he gathers a cast of actors and tells them to live their lives within the constructs of a mock up of the city. So he wins a MacArthur grant and decides decides to build uh, an entire city, a a life-size replica of New York within a gigantic warehouse. So obviously there are already elements of things that couldn't really happen in reality, but I think that's relevant to the point of the film. Synecdoche New York focuses heavily on death. It focuses heavily on life and the cycle of life, including birth and death. It also focuses heavily on art imitating life and life imitating art. So the main character, Caden Cotard, played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, is a complete hypochondriac, which is someone that obsesses over thinking that there's something wrong with them. I've suffered with this for my life, which is probably why I find Caden to be such a relatable character. He is uh, constantly worrying that he has diseases, uh, that he has problems with his brain, problems with his body. For myself, I've obsessed over having brain damage. I've I've thought I've had brain tumours before. I thought I've had diseases before. I've panicked about having seizures. I've panicked about having having a stroke, having a heart attack, so I can understand his character quite well. Him and his wife are complete polar opposites. He is married to someone called Adele, and she is someone that is kind of oblivious to her problems and ignores them, an ignorance is bliss kind of route, whereas Caden obsesses over these problems. So he's an incredibly depressed person struggling with life and struggling with his relationships. So he successfully puts on theatre performances and then wins that MacArthur grant. And with that, yeah, he decides to build a life-size replica of New York. And within this, he gets actors to play the role of him. He gets actors to play the role of his wife. Uh, and all the people he's met in his life and the relationships he's had with those people. And it's just amazing. There are elements of Freudian psychology, if you're into that kind of stuff. The whole anima animus thing is uh, definitely uh, looked into in this film. I can't really give away too much because this is just 
a little rundown of the film. I'm not going to be doing a complete analysis because I'd love it if you guys could see the film without me talking about it first. If you want me to do a full analysis of this film in the future, I don't mind doing that. But it's an incredible film. It really is. The way Charlie Kaufman has a, an incredible attention to detail, the way the timeline in, in the film works is very strange. Time goes by very quickly in this film. It's just amazing, absolutely amazing. So if you're into psychology or surrealist stuff, it's it's got its funny elements to it as well, but it, it is mainly a rather bleak film. And another thing this film focuses on, which I'm really interested in, is the fact that we ourselves are all actors. We are all playing out our own roles. Uh, this, I mean, you may have noticed when you're around different people, different groups of friends, you will change the way that you act depending on who you're with so each of us in our own way are actors in our own lives and I think that's a huge part of this film which I really enjoyed I really enjoyed looking into that side of things so I'd love it if you guys would check this film out it, it don't worry if it's not your kind of thing I know it's a kind of an acquired taste you require to watch a film like this but uh, it gets a 7.5 out of 10 on IMDB which I think is ridiculous it, it deserves a much much higher rating than that but anyway that's that let's move on to our final topic of the day Finally, I'm going to recommend some albums for you and I'd love if you could recommend some albums for me down in the comments section. That would be great and any suggestions I like I will feature in my next Let's Talk video. First is the Synecdoche New York official soundtrack. I know this is kind of a bit silly because I was just talking about it but it really does deserve its own recommendation uh, separate to the film. So the soundtrack is by someone called John Bryan, who also did the soundtrack for Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. The soundtrack is oozing with emotions, different emotions, and whilst watching the Synecdoche film, you will notice different tracks playing uh, through different scenes or different feelings. There is a certain track that often plays when there is trouble within the main character's relationships and each of the tracks has absolute significance to the film. There are some tracks that have their own lyrics which are very relevant to the film. Again, it's not something I can really discuss until you guys check out the film or I will do a separate analysis because I don't want to give anything away. My second album for you is called Dude Incredible by Shellac. Shellac is an absolutely fantastic band. I love them to pieces. It is kind of noise rock with uh, early punk elements, but it, the most similar sound that I've really heard these days is Rage Against the Machine. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you might enjoy a bit of Shellac. They are a wonderful band. The band is fronted by Steve Albini, who is also the frontman for Big Black. He kind of strives to do everything himself, keeping away from record labels and staying independent. And through doing that, he's become very successful and very inspirational in that kind of thing. My third album that I'm going to be suggesting to you is an album called Wiretap Scars by Sparta. Now, Sparta is comprised of some of the members of a band called At The Drive-In. At The Drive-In is easily in my top 10 favourite artists of all time, maybe in my top 5. But Sparta has a kind of different sound they, they still have the kind of post-hardcore sound, but is a little bit more tame, a little bit more just in the alternative rock side of things. So, they are my albums for you today, and I think that pretty much covers everything today. So, I really hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, please do leave it a like and subscribe if you want to help support this bitch. Thank you so much, guys. I will see you in the next one.